and entertainment this week. Make, 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 make news. Okay, something big happened in the scene of uh, Ikorodu Boys. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. if you know the Ikorodu Boys, for those of you who don't know, they are guys who do all this mimic. They like reenact something. They started mostly with music videos, but now they jump straight into movies when they did uh, the one for Money Heist. Yes, oh. they did for Money Heist. And uh, that one was big because even the professor retweeted. Uh, it was it was a big deal. Then they did something yesterday and uh, it was all over the place. Seriously. Yes. It had close to um, 4 million views under 24 hours. They did uh, the trailer for Extraction in their own low-budget way, which was very fun. And now the big thing about it was uh, the Russo brothers actually retweeted the tweet and then invited them for a premiere of Extraction Part 2. So when Extraction is done, or Extraction Part 2 is done and everything because they've already greenlit a sequel to it, and they have an official invite right now to the premiere. Like how wow. big is that for the Korean new boys? Yes. It's really, really big. And to even add more jara to this sweetness, Chris Hemsworth himself retweeted it saying epic. Then he posted it on his Instagram and it already has 10 million views. Oh my God. It is massive for the Korodu boys. Seriously. So yes, we wish them all the best. I mean, keep doing what you do and who knows, man, the world stage will be your next platform. Yeah. And the Korodu boys who want to say congratulations to them. And I want to put this out there. You know, the Korodu, when the Korodu boys did one for Money Heist, nobody not a, 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 an actor or not a, a, a movie director nobody actually like you know like retweeted or like oh said something about them they just kept quiet but now these guys have been retweeted by the Russo brothers and Chris Hemsworth you know how big these guys are really? for those of you who don't know the Russo brothers they directed the Winter Soldier Civil mm -hmm. War Endgame and uh, you know and the rest now this is a big thing if they, they already blow they will now be on that wall stage and then, you know, some, some movie directors now be like, yeah. hey, 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 it's our people. It's, our people. it's Nollywood. Slap them. Hey. I'm saying this, yes. You guys need to be, you guys need to uh, support these guys and all the people doing anything that has to do with movies, you know. We need to make Nollywood grow beyond what it is right now. That's yes. True. Okay. Um, back to more movie news right now. Um, a couple of years ago, it was said that Jamie Foxx Jamie Foxx was to play Mike Tyson in a biopic and uh, we didn't hear anything about that almost five years down the line uh, you know Jamie Foxx is an Oscar winner because he did a biopic for Ray back in 2004 and we saw how big that was for him he won an Oscar for that and now he's said to play Mike Tyson in a Mike Tyson biopic now there was no news for it we believe he was dead in the waters and everything but right now he came out to say um, the ball is still rolling for the Mike Tyson biopic and it's something we'd like to see because Jamie Foxx is a wonderful actor yeah. Yeah. So let's see how he brings Mike Tyson into the scene for us. He said the reason why it's um, taken this long is um, because biopics sometimes they take time. Sometimes it may be 10 years to build. But this one, they are going deep into it because they want to see, uh, they want to address many parts of, uh, of Mike Tyson's life when he was young and all this. So it's going to be a big work for him. So let's see how. He said, uh, we want to show everybody, he, I, and I quote, he said, we want to show everybody and uh, everyone involved. He said, he wants to depict the different lives of Mike Tyson throughout his controversial career and I think we lay the layers for Mike Tyson in his story. I think everybody from young and old will be able to understand this man's journey. So let's see how that goes for Jamie Foxx with the Mike Tyson biopic. Yeah, and they do look alike. I feel they kind of no, look they don't. alike. When they don't touch this guy. No, they don't. When they do prosthetic makeup, then yeah, maybe. Back to more movie gist. There was something reported uh, days ago that Michael Keaton, if you know Michael Keaton, he played Batman in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie and also played uh, it in the sequel, that he's in talk to return as Batman in Ezra Miller's The Flash. Now we know Ezra Miller is going to have a Flash standalone movie, but that has been in development for like what now? It's been too long. But right now, news is coming back on it and we're hearing that Michael Keaton is in talks to return as the Batman. I think it's going to be one to see him as you know the old grumpy Batman and all that but still on the news of that we're hearing that uh, Jeffrey Morgan is going to come back to play Thomas Wayne if you've seen the 2013 Flashpoint Paradox the Flash movie DC animated Flashpoint movie I think they are going to follow that route as well to make a movie on that so let's see how that goes now for those of you who followed the YouTube Red original Cobra Kai 
based on the 1980s movie Karate Kid. Now we're hearing that the season three might go on to Netflix. It will leave YouTube and go straight to Netflix. I've seen season one, which was excellent. Season two, and it wasn't as good as season one, but it did what it had to do. And now season three will be on to Netflix. Have you seen Cobra Kai at all? No. Nope. You should see it. Now we know Zoe Saldana as uh, the babe who played Gomorra in uh, the MCU, yes, for yeah. from Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, do you know that Amanda Seyfried would have been Gomorra, but she passed? You seen Mamma Mia? Yeah. You know her, be the girl. Yeah. Uh, hey, you seen uh, what's that other movie again? She did with David. Uh, uh, See, let me just let me just tell you this. Mm-hmm. No other person can play the way I take like that girl. No other person would have played it and pleased my spirit, man. The <laughs> way she did it, like she killed every bit of that character. So I mean, so Zoe Saldana did her. She really did her, her job yeah. on on. But imagine somebody else would have played oh, it, which is Amanda Seyfried. But she passed on because she said, "Let me just quote how it, it was." It was how we said this. The reason why she passed on the role, like like why why. She said, she thinks about it often. She says she's not a move, a Marvel movie watcher. And I quote, she said, I think why I was like, ah, I don't want to be green. Uh, it's just so much work. She now said she remember uh, when Jennifer Lawrence, you know, Jennifer Lawrence played Mystique in, yeah. uh, in, uh, in the X-Men. X-Men. And she said Jennifer Lawrence was talking about it once, how it took long for her to get blue. And I was like, ah, that seems like a hell on earth because then you get to set and you're only there for a couple of hours and then you have to take everything off. Oh. And that was literally the reason why I didn't jump on to play Gomorra. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, seriously. This may sweet a lot of people right now because we're hearing Netflix The Witcher Season 2 is set to resume production in August. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, people like Danny Zugre, who you said your wife uh, said somebody already has Season 2, Episode 1. Okay. They are, see, they are not even finished. <laughs> so, yes, Netflix's The Witcher will resume production in around August. So, let's see how that goes. About Netflix right now, Lucifer, the TV show Lucifer, is set to be renewed for a sixth and final season. You see how that is working? Six final season, six six final oh season. <laughs> so yes, Lucifer. You know, after after a couple of seasons, it was moved to to uh, Netflix. So right now, a sixth and final season will be coming up on Netflix, and that will be the final. So Tom Ellis has been doing a wonderful job as Lucifer. So let's see how the final season will wrap up everything. Still talking about movies right now, and Henry Cavill has uh, come out to say that he'd like to play Superman for more years to come. He should be the only one allowed to play Superman. So I'm sorry, I'm a Superman. guy. That 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 man, that man is. I he's don't want to use the word man. hot. He's a, he's a beautiful man. He's a, he's a beautiful he's man. A very uh-huh. beautiful, very Haba. beautiful man. So yes, Haba. he has said he is is down to come <laughs> to play um Superman. And according to him, he said, "I've always been a fan of Superman. With a character like that, you carry the mantle uh-huh. with you offset." And it becomes part of your public representation. When you meet children, children don't necessarily see me as Henry Cavill. They might see me as Superman. Mm-hmm. And that's the responsibility which comes with that. Because it's such a wonderful character. It's actually a responsibility. And I'm happy to have and I hope that I play more of Superman in the years Until to come. Until somebody comes out on the Me Too movement and says he did this and did that. But hey, here's me trying to say this. I think he did a very good job. Especially after finally seeing BVS. Yes. Because anybody who comes up and says BVS was trash, it's because they saw the Tretzko go version. You I don't will, blame them. I will, I will do you what Roberto Carlos does to people. I will aim for your ankle with my studs. <laughs> I'm just saying. But yes, I totally agree with you, Chinato, on this. This will be the first time I'll ever agree oh with you. Oh my on God. Air. That yes, he's such a beautiful man. He is a beautiful man. A beautiful Superman. Yes. yes. And a beautiful Kalel. Mm. Ah, yes. beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> don't leave me, brother. Don't leave okay. me. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, under, under the umbrella of BVS, uh, the man who actually did the score, the original score for Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, Hanzima, has uh, come out to claim that his Dune score that he's doing, Denis uh, Villeneuve is directing Dune, that is driving everybody crazy with the number of idea he has. Okay. And we know, we, we it's Hanzima. Anything he says about score, we agree. We agree. Oh, we, we, cannot totally argue, agree. we cannot argue. I have, it. I have a feeling that Hanzima can sneeze and make it a score. Yes. Is that good? He's Why that. Is that? Hail we will hail him as plenty as we want to hail him. Have you mentioned anything about Joel Schumacher? Uh, yes, Joe Schumacher, the guy who directed uh, one of the worst Batman movies. Two of the worst Batman oh. movies. Mm, 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 just one, forever, just one. Batman, Batman Forever, forever was, was, was okay. Even according to Bob Kane, like that's that's the best representation of Batman. He that created Batman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was okay, but that Batman and Robin. It was. So he passed it away. Was for yeah. So yeah, uh, Joe Schumacher, director, he passed away, and uh, uh, some celebrities have come out to you know pay their respect, and even Jim Carrey, who played the Riddler in uh, the movie, has uh, also paid his respect. So may he rest in peace Amen. as he moves on. So anyhow, guys, that's the much we, we can take for. Uh, the news uh, but uh, you can also catch it on on uh, Twitter on Popcorn and Reels and also on uh, Cool FM Abuja well, that's entertainment, entertainment.